Hi everybody, this is my second video in the series on graphing rational functions. In this video we're going to pick up an additional feature that did not show up in our uh, first video. So, to speed things up, I went ahead and factored the numerator and denominator, which you always want to do when you're graphing a rational function. Now with the properties we saw last time, uh, I'm not going to talk about those in any kind of detail, but we still need to find them if we're going to graph. So. Uh, let's find the y-intercept by uh, evaluating the function at 0. I would look at unfactored form to do this because it's all the x's become 0. You have negative 4 over negative 12, which is positive 1 third. So our y-intercept is right here, really close to the origin. Now let's find our x-intercepts. And I said in the last video, that's going to happen when the top equals 0. So if you look at this factor, x plus 1, if you set that equal to 0, you get x equals negative 1. So we're going to have an x-intercept at negative 1, 0. That's right here. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, we'll do the same thing with this other factor. This is where this video has an additional feature. These factors cancel. So you're not going to have an x-intercept at that point you're also not going to have a vertical asymptote. And we'll get to that in a moment. Let's continue with things that we know, though. So the uh, vertical asymptote, and I said the, there's only one. The vertical asymptote occurs when the bottom equals 0. So x minus 3 equals 0. You have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So you can go ahead and, and graph that. Uh, x equals 3 is right here. We'll draw our vertical asymptote. Now let's find our in behavior asymptote, otherwise known as a horizontal asymptote. And again, you may or may not remember from, uh, from Algebra 2, um, but if the degree of the top and bottom are the same, like they are here, uh, so just very uh, shorthand, we'll say the degree of top equals the degree of the bottom. The horizontal asymptote occurs at the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the leading coefficients here are negative 1 and positive 1. So the horizontal asymptote occurs at negative 1 over positive 1. Of course, simplify that. So we have an in-behavior asymptote, a horizontal asymptote at negative 1. And just like in the last video, I don't like drawing the horizontal asymptotes across the entire graph because, well, they're really end-behavior asymptotes. They only are telling you something about what happens far to the right and far to the left. They literally have no bearing on the shape of the graph in the middle. Okay, so let's get to uh, the new property that did, we did not see in the previous video. So the reason we did not have an x-intercept at negative 4 or a vertical asymptote at negative 4 is these factors cancel. Now, in algebra, what you want to do when you cancel is you want to say, well, this function is equal to negative x plus 1 over x minus 3. And strictly speaking, that's not true. And it's easy to see that that's not true. On the left side of this equal sign, if you plug in negative 4, that expression is undefined because you get 0 divided by 0, and you're not allowed to divide by 0. But on the right-hand side, if you plug in negative 4, which we'll do in a minute, well, you get a perfectly valid uh, y value. So these expressions can't be equal to each other. They're not the same. On the left, you're not allowed to plug in negative 4, but on the right, you are. So whatever these things are, they're clearly not the same. So in math, we have a special symbol. You don't always see this in high school math, but I like it. It's a triple equal sign. And this means equivalent. These two expressions are equivalent if you plug in any value that's allowed. So since negative 4 is not allowed, well, this doesn't mean equal. But if you were to plug in, let's say, 10 on the left or 10 on the right, you'd get the same thing. So what this leads to is 
a hole in the graph. The idea is you're not allowed to plug in negative 4 because we're looking at the left hand side. We're not allowed to change the function. We're not allowed to cancel just because we feel like it. So negative 4, x equals negative 4 does not work in our function. But what if it did? If it did work, to calculate the y value, you would plug it in here, because that's what equivalent means. So negative, negative 4 plus 1 over negative 4 minus 3. So let's do a little math. Negative 4 plus 1, that's negative 3, but there's a negative, so this is positive 3, and then we have negative 7. So negative 3 sevenths. So there's going to be a hole in the graph at the point negative 4, negative 3 sevenths, which again, just approximate the fraction as best you can. And let me change color to the blue that we're graphing with. So you're going to have a hole in the graph uh, at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, and then negative 3 sevenths. Okay, so. Let's go through the list and see if we've done everything we need to. We found the, uh, we found the holes, we found the intercepts, we found the end behavior asymptote, and now we need to find the limit behavior and we need to sketch the graph. And these two we can do at the same time. If you remember the previous video, we spent a lot of time uh, finding the limits on the left and the right. Well, this example is actually easier. You don't need to do that. There's enough information in the graph that you can just go ahead and draw. You don't have to find uh, the limit behavior by thinking through the graph numerically. And here's why. I know just by looking at this graph that on the right side of this asymptote, I have to go to negative infinity. And then as we get to the in behavior asymptote, well, I have to get close to that. Now the question might be, well, how did you know the graph went to negative infinity? Why not positive infinity? Well, just imagine what would happen. If the graph went to positive infinity, well, you still have to get close to your in behavior asymptote. That's what it's there for. And in order to get close to the in behavior asymptote, look what we did. We had to cross the x-axis. But I know that there's only one x-intercept. We found it. It's over here. I know there's not an x-intercept over here. So because we tried to go to positive infinity, we reached a contradiction. This can't happen. So instead of going to positive infinity, that's how I knew the graph went to negative infinity. And we have something very similar on the other side of the asymptote. Think about multiplicity again. This factor x plus 1 has odd multiplicity. So the graph has to cross over the x-axis at this point. So you have to, I'm going to start at the y-intercept, I'm going to go to the x-intercept, and because of odd multiplicity, I have to cross over. I also knew that because I have to get close to the hole in the graph, I suppose. Now, I'm at this y-intercept, I'm going to have to go to positive infinity. And I know that because the graph can't turn around and go to negative infinity. It would have to pick up another x-intercept, but we know where all of those occur. So that means since we can't go to negative infinity, our only other option is to go to positive infinity. So I didn't have to think through all that limit stuff like we did in the previous video. I was just able to graph. However, you do have to think about multiplicity, uh, where your x-intercepts are, where all of your asymptotes are. So there is a lot of thought that goes into this. But in actuality, there's actually not a lot of work. All right, so this was another example of a rational function, this one that has a hole in the graph. One more video uh, where we pick up uh, one more feature. See you then.